Okay. So welcome you at the workshop workshop session. I hope that uh, both sessions are working right now uh, simultaneously, and it's uh, also signal is good. Uh, I would like to also welcome those who are behind the uh, laptops, PCs, or maybe mobile phones. I hope, I hope that you have, have a chance, chance to, to pick, pick between, between this presentation, presentation related to practical step uh, to the mineral soil balance or presentation that will be run in the second workshop. So everything should be fixed now. Uh, before I came here to this stage, uh, my friend who's sitting there told me uh, this uh, morning plenary session was really good one because there was a German lady who was talking in German and there was a lady who was talking in English. So that I have, have to have the same s right now because he's from Czech Republic. So I will speak in Czech language and somebody will translate to, to you. So it's very volunteer to do that. <laughs> Jirka, I'm sorry. Je mi to luto. You have to listen to myself in English. <laughs> okay, but uh, you already saw this presentation because we are part of the team that organize uh, agricultural conferences in Czech Republic. And uh, so far we, we had two runs. Uh, this COVID just stopped the third session uh, this, this uh, winter time. Um, and the presentation I'm presenting right now, I already gave to that conference, so you already saw it. Um, that's the overview of my presentation of the workshop. And I'm, I hope that I will be able to manage it within this hour. 45 minutes because I would like to give you opportunity to ask questions. Um, even um, I would like to announce that if you have a question, you can even interrupt me now and ask it, uh, ask question. I would like to answer. I would like to rather give you uh, opportunity to uh, to to fulfill your needs, or than than rather just talk lots of about theory and uh, and also a practical things. Okay. So, and the same is valid for those who are watching on the internet. If you have any question, you can just write down and uh, hopefully technicians will uh, let us know the questions. Okay, so what I will talk about uh, right now is uh, I would like to present you God cons God's concept of healthy plants. Uh, it's not only plants, it's all system, that living system that uh, it's kind of built it and working in, in on earth that uh, Everybody is happy. Uh, plants are happy. Planet is happy. Uh, it's environmentally friendly, uh, clean. Uh, people and animals are uh, gaining from from that uh, healthy system, and yeah, everything is just living and nutrition. And uh, there are lots of and there is abundance of everything. So, kind of concept. Then I will talk about a little bit, few slides I have uh, about recent soil. Uh, state uh, of the soil quality. Uh, then I will talk about healthy, ideal healthy and nutritionally balanced soil. That's the main topic of this presentation. So a little bit of physical properties you probably already know. And I would like to explain you concept of cation exchange capacity. That is the, the core uh, element of the nutritionally balanced soil. And then I will explain a um, little bit. I will see how much we will go through. Uh, through some individual uh, minerals that uh, what, what are the importance of those mineral minerals, uh, what causes deficiencies or what are deficiency uh, uh, examples or what uh, access, if that mineral is access in a, in a soil, what it costs in the soil. So, and soil test will be somewhere hidden between those two. Uh, maybe I haven't said at the beginning uh, something about myself. Uh, I am a gardener. I'm, I think I am a hobby gardener. I have a vision, maybe dream to once have a farm and, and uh, produce products and uh, sell them and be with people and, and serve them with uh, this type of manner. But originally I am a teacher. I work at a university. I I'm a specialty, specialist in wood, wood science, wood properties. So if you will ask me anything about wood physics, wood mechanics, something about modeling of how water goes in and out, mathematics is my, my big hobby. 
which also I use it for soil tests, which is good. <laughs> so yeah, just ask me. I, I think I, I know something about it. But this is very big hobby. Me and my wife are having a garden. We, behind our house, we live in a village of 1,500 people. And, uh, but it's not very excluded area. We are just suburb of the bigger city in the middle of Slovakia uh, called Zvolen. Okay, so uh, because, of we because we love garden and we have a struggling with our soil, uh, we try everything or we, we are trying everything and we learn uh, on the way. So that's why I kind of uh, stick to the soil and soil analysis and soil health. And uh, we wanted to see uh, s how this could be enhanced, uh, how, how this could be used, that we can grow f abundantly and, and nutrition food in our garden. Because we have some struggling with soil, maybe later I will tell you about it. Okay, let's go to the concept. Um, um, it's a, it's a well-known fact that if you have a healthy soil, you have healthy plants and healthy animals that are pasture on that soil, then you have a healthy food, of course, and healthy food means healthy people, and healthy people means also healthy l uh, land, or uh, it's all just written uh, to, to the cycle that uh, if something is at the beginning good, then it brings life and it's abundant, and it, this, this life doesn't damage uh, whatever is follow. So uh, there is a, uh, we had a professor at the university dealing with soil, I think he was from Michigan University? I'm not sure. Uh, ah, but from Washington State University, I have it written here. Marcus Fleury, and he was talking about, he's a specialist in soil, agricultural soil, and he was talking about uh, the general trend in agriculture, that uh, soil is just, uh, in a way how we process it, is uh, shrinked, and is uh, the land, the soil land, or the arable uh, uh, the land that, is, that could be used for agriculture is just year to year smaller and smaller. And the reason why people don't struggle, uh, because population is growing all the time, the, pe the reason why people did not struggle and there are not huge uh, problems is that there is a technology in the agriculture and this technology just kind of knows how to, from smaller land, take bigger yield. But of, of course, this has some consequences. And the, unfortunately, those consequences are caused for the smaller and smaller uh, agricultural land. Okay, let's go to concept of healthy um, plants. Um, we had similar ideas because when I talk to Jirka, he'll talk about uh, microorganisms and how they are very important in the soil. Uh, Sunday morning, he will talk about it. Uh, we found out that we have the same ideas because New Start program that is really good one for people is really, I, I was just going through those eight points and I found out, wow, plants are needed exactly the same way, or they're working or functioning the same way. Uh, they, they need nutrition and nutrition they can get from the uh, minerals that are in the soil. Uh, they, they need sun. Uh, oh, I, sh I should say they need exercise first. They need exercise. And I was thinking, what kind of exercise plants do? Because they are staying all the time at the same place. They just don't move. But uh, in reality, they really move. They, they move towards the sun, some flowing uh, of the sap uh, going up and down in the, in the plant, uh, some produce from the photosynthesis we talked about this morning, just go to the uh, plant itself and also to the ground, to the roots and the ground. Uh, and also minerals uh, solution uh, that uh, are needed for growing or functioning the plant, just going from the roots up to the plant. So there is some movement going on. And it helps to, to nourish the body of the plant. And it's the same like, uh, like we are. Uh, if we exercise, we move, our bl blood fluctuation in, in the body just brings uh, um, well-being to, to us. Water, of course, uh, they need needs water. If they don't have, they just don't function. Uh, they have, they need the sunshine. I think maybe sunshine for plants is the the top priority. Uh, uh, when they have a sunshine, they can do this photosynthesis and they can uh, produce all this stuff that is related to uh, life for the plant and also for the. 
for the microorganism. They support biology with that. Um, then they need uh, temperance, and we will talk about that some accesses. You know, wh when you have a when you have access of something, it, it doesn't. Uh, it's not well for 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 even for people. You know, if they have a, I don't know if they like sugar. Sugar is sometimes good, but uh, if they over uh, doses are with if uh, they are overdose with sugar or overdose with uh, salt, for example, it's excess, and this excess has effect on on the life. So we need to keep it balanced, you know, to have a temperance uh, in overeating, not using uh, bad stuff, which is not needed for us people, and also there are also ingredients that plants really doesn't need it. Um, uh, air, they need air, of course, and it, it's not only air for photosynthesis that there is a CO2 in the air, but they also need to breathe down in the ground uh, through the soil. So soil needs to breathe. Uh, uh, the CO2 needs to go inside the soil and also it needs to go out. So there, there needs to be movement. They need rest, of course, every night. Uh, even land needs to rest, we know it, uh, which refresh uh, lots of biology in the soil, and everything needs to be. Uh, everything is bind by uh, trusting God. So without God, there will be really nothing. He's a creator who did it. Okay, there is a there is a health pyramid for plants. I bought it from bought it. I borrow it. <laughs> I take it from uh, John Camp, and he 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 he's a Amish uh, farmer, agriculturist. And he runs a company that helps, uh, like an ad advisory company that, that helps uh, many uh, farms to transition from uh, st standard uh, uh, agriculture, conventional agriculture, to kind of reg regenerative, which is regenerative agriculture, which helps, which goes in the flow uh, of the concept that is given by God on the earth. So he, he built up this uh, plant pyramid and uh, that, that pyramid is saying that plants have uh, their own immunity and it's built on something. Uh, uh, it has four stages and the, the biggest one, or the, the bottom one, and the most important is uh, photosynthesis. So once uh, plants have full photosynthesis, full means if you have a land, uh, conventional uh, agriculture land, and you plant, for example, corn or soybeans or uh, some other stuff, uh, <coughs> The, photo, the photosynthesis is process that is uh, measured. It could be measured by, by tools, a little bit expensive, but it is measurable thing. Uh, we know how to, we know how to, how uh, leaves uh, are, how, uh, how the photosynthesis is running in the plant by measuring uh, breathing of the leaves. And uh, once uh, they measure it on the field, they found out that the uh, capacity of the photosynthesis of plants is roughly on a field at the stage of 10 up to 20 percent of total full capacity. Total full capacity is given by plant if they have everything in right time, run time and uh, right uh, stage uh, in a laboratory condition. You know, so imagine God creates plants, but uh, and they create they can create let's say 100 percent of those sugar and processes uh, from the s from from the photosynthesis. But when we plant it on the field, it, they're just running on not even half. They, they're running on 10% of capacity or 20% of capacity. Uh, but once you do this photosynthesis in a full range, uh, so in the, in the field, they just grow for themselves because they have no more uh, sugar, no more uh, units to build uh, just for themselves. And they have no time or no... Mm, no uh, resources to build something which is down in the ground. But once they did it in a f uh, much further uh, capacity, let's say at 50, 60 percent, uh, suddenly uh, life in the ground just starts to flourish. And this, this helps uh, build immunity for, for the, for the uh, plants. So the first stage is photosynthesis. And uh, when, when this is running perfectly, uh, uh, the plant creates sugar and sugar becomes even more complex sugar because of lots of sugar and uh, when you have a, a bigger structure of those sugars the plants, the body of the plants 
is made of those complex sugars, complex saccharides. And those saccharides are not uh, kind of edible for some kind of insects, which means uh, insects uh, uh, just likes, um, like we people, like, likes uh, simple sugar. But when this is not present, they just don't touch this plant. So automatically, uh, plants just receive immunity against certain type of insects. For example, aphids, uh, thrips, cabbage worms, or corn borer. If, uh, if they have uh, good capacity, uh, they produce sugar, complex sugar, they get immunity. The second level is uh, complete protein production. So one you have, once you have access of sugars, and then you have uh, available uh, minerals, uh, uh, minerals that could help also other uh, substances in the plant, like amino acids, and from those you, uh, plants can create uh, proteins. So once they create proteins and complex proteins, which are also kind of branched, uh, they received uh, uh, resistance against fungi and, and pathogen of bacteria. Uh, for example, cabbage mold or grape mold, uh, phytophthora, uh, potato phytophthora, uh, if you have it uh, in your land, uh, or some bacterial disease that are attacking apples or pears. Uh, in on the leaves of the uh, of the trees, you can see sometimes the spots, small rusty spots. So those are a uh, sign that the uh, plant doesn't have a complete uh, protein production. So these two stages are based on the balanced minerals. If you have these balanced minerals in the soil, the uh, plant will strive. And the, the other two stages, uh, increasing uh, lipid production, which is fats in the plants, and later uh, secondary plants metabolites production uh, are based on the biology in the uh, under the plants. So once you have those, you just create perfect, or God creates perfect plants for, from all this system, and suddenly uh, you have a resistance against bugs, like potato beetles, they just don't attack it. I don't know if you, does anybody from you plants potatoes? Oh, half of the people, that's good. And have you noticed that uh, once you find in the field the weakest uh, potato uh, plant, that usually you find uh, potato bugs at that place. Did you find it? Okay, so it's a perfect method because uh, uh, we don't use uh, pest, uh, insect si insecticides uh, for getting rid of uh, potato beetles. We just wait uh, when they start to lay eggs. And we pick the weakest uh, potato in the field, and each time we go to that potato and see if there is, is are, are there any eggs or not. So we don't need to take care of all fields. We just few plants, check the few plants. And once they start to lay eggs, they usually uh, plant them close to that potatoes or on that weak potato, which is perfect way because once you smash it, find those uh, uh, bugs and you are free for at least two, three weeks. But once they spread it, yeah, you know what is it. <laughs> Just getting harder. Okay, so that's the, that's the health pyramid of plants. Um, what's happened in agriculture? Um, this is a um, um, figure from one of the prestige journal article uh, called Nature. Uh, the authors of this uh, article just uh, know it's a fact that uh, once uh, agriculturists use the land, uh, usually organic metal matter that is at the stage of 100%, after 50 years just drop down uh, in average to half of the range, which means uh, Organic matter is a uh, kind of sign of uh, fertility of the land, how much the biology is going on, how much the, uh, how much the water is very well kept in the, in the soil. But once, we, uh, once agriculturists uh, use uh, buried land, the organic matter st start to decline very rapidly due to uh, uh, tilling the soil, uh, due to practices that are involving agriculture. To get back to, to that stage, and it will take another 50 years, we need to heavy add some manure uh, addition, even <laughs> through the compost or from, from animal manure. Uh, there are some techniques like succession. If, you will, if we will leave it land as it is right now at this stage, it will take at least like 
the resource prognosis or model in this paper that it will at least take 200 years to get back to that original stage of 100% of organic matter that is capable uh, in the soil to carry. Uh, there are some techniques as a reduced tillage, uh, if it's uh, shallow tillage or uh, it could be even deep tillage, but not very often, which doesn't destroy uh, functioning of biology in, in the soil. So there are some techniques, but uh, we need to, of course, we need to do something with this. Fortunately, uh, it has some consequences that uh, vitality and uh, nutrition are just going down. I have some uh, case study, but I will skip them because of the time. Maybe I will stop at the selenium. Selenium is very important for people. Uh, those th th there were three uh, case study related to minerals that are deficient in the soil, uh, naturally deficient in some re areas. The first one, before it was cobalt, responsible for B12 production, uh, iodine, which we usually give, uh, get from the soil, because soil, iodine is put it into the soil, uh, salt, and uh, we eat it from the salt. Um, okay, this can be done also by uh, putting, putting this into the soil. And uh, yeah, but I would like to stop at the selenium. Uh, selenium is a very important uh, mineral, and uh, I don't know how it is in Austria or maybe Germany or wherever you are from, Romania. Uh, in Slovakia, we have uh, lots of, most of the lands are very luck in selenium. Like there is just not uh, enough uh, I, uh, those this selenium, and once the selenium is missing in the soil, it just doesn't go to the uh, plants because have there is no way to get them. Uh, and this, uh, if you have a lack of selenium, uh, there are some kind of disease that are that are involved in this. I don't know if you heard of Keshan disease. Keshan is a region in China. It was called because it was also land that was lack in selenium. And uh, the disease was very uh, often uh, present in that region. Uh, it's, uh, it's a cardiomyopathy, which is heart disease that has problem uh, of the functioning uh, heart uh, muscle. Uh, selenium is at the same time uh, anti uh, um, and it's also antioxidant. Uh, uh, consumption should be at least 50 up to 200 milligrams per day per person. Uh, of course, if you eat it more than 300, it's toxic, but consumption in average in Europe is maybe uh, uh, below this recommended value. F it's 40, in Slovakia even less, 30, 38. So uh, people just rely on the supplements. But we, for example, know that uh, selenium is very, pres very good present in, a, uh, in a wheat or barley, but needs to be produced on a land that uh, contains selenium. So I once you have an opportunity to buy uh, wheat from uh, United States or Canada, there are plenty. There is a plenty of selenium. Or you just need to have a, a those how they call it Brazil nuts. Eat once, twice a day, and you can fill your your needs. Um, in Finland, they found out this. Uh, many years ago, and I think it was like in the 70s or 80s, uh, 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 last century, uh, they start to apply uh, selen, I think it was, uh, um, ah, sodium selenate, I, I have it here. Uh, they, they apply sodium selenate into the soil, and it took like regular um, enrichment of the soil. Once they reach a uh, desired level, they stop to do it, and so right now, in you, if you would like to have a good uh, grain from with selenium and from Europe, just buy something in Finland. <laughs> okay. Um, the last slide, the theoretical one. Uh, because of this production, we lack really nutrition in, in our food that are conventionally uh, made. There was a huge study in published in 2009 uh, at Horticulture Science, very prestige journal. And they, they were comparing nutritional values of uh, certain crops uh, in the United Kingdom. And they compare years 1930 with 1980. And also they did similar study in the United States. And they compare roughly 50 years span also in the United States. And results were kind of interesting. Uh, 
One means that this, they are the same uh, in uh, nutrition. Th that's the uh, value of containing the nutrition. And those are several minerals that are, or uh, some vi vitamins also that are present in, in that, they, that, that they studied. And almost everything just dropped down. So we don't have such nutritional food as our grandparents, great-grandparents had at that time. Uh, which is kind of sad. An interesting thing is, look at this cup, Cooper, copper, Cooper, copper, yeah. Uh, it drops down 80% down, you know. And uh, copper is very good mineral. It's responsible for taste. If you have a copper together with some sweet, mm, in, in, in a sweet fruits, you just it kind of enhance the sweetness of the fruits. So imagine what, what beautiful, perfect uh, tomato ate our grandparents or great grandparents. Lots of uh, natural source of copper. Copper. Okay. So how to fix it? Uh, there are lots of schools. You know, it's like in nutrition. You know, there are lots of ways how to get better health and, and healthy diet. You know, but and each. Each uh, of the system just try to kind of fix any uh, relation that are on in this image. They try to, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, provide sufficient sun sunshine, provide sufficient water, you know, air uh, in into the ground. All is binded to the plants, uh, biology, striving bi biology, or balanced mineral soils. Uh, about biology, we will talk about with a Yirka presentation on, on Sunday. Uh, Yirka, you have it in Sun on Mašto v sobotu? Teda v nedelu? Mikrofon. Okay, so on Sunday. Sunday morning we will talk about biology. Um, my presentation is about balanced minerals. But uh, you, have to took, uh, you have to think about it in a big perspective. So if you fix uh, minerals in your soil, this is not like a magic bullet. You have to have everything all around because once you have a perfect uh, minerals in the soil and you don't replant the land, you just have nothing, you know. <laughs> so if you don't have enough uh, water, uh, if, you have if you have perfect balanced minerals, you just don't get the crop. It's uh, it's all system. So if we will talk about or balanced minerals, for example, biology and balanced minerals are very, very tied together. Uh, for example, you, you can have uh, deficiency in soil on some minerals. For example, phosphorus, that's the typical one. Uh, if you have a lack of phosphorus in the soil, you can add some minerals from uh, various sources, even organic sources. But uh, if, you let the, uh, if you let the biology work do his work, it just takes a little bit more time, but uh, this phosphorus is present in the soil, but it's just not in the form that is available for the plant. But once the biology will strive and be abundant in the soil, it can fix by itself. Although it could take some time, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it is two years, five years. Mm. According to J John Kemp, this uh, Amish uh, 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 agriculturist, uh, he was saying that uh, in average uh, to, to re-establish uh, the balance, that plants just providing lots of out, uh, outgoing uh, um, exudates that uh, provides uh, abundance of life under the ground, that you don't need to add any additional minerals. If you would set everything right, you can achieve this mineral in average in four to three, four, three, four, maybe five years. Once he said that it happens within one year, but it was very good land. So, yeah, um, uh, it is possible. So. We can wait for biology and do it everything right so they will uh, prosper and balance will come or we will fix the balance, fix the photosynthesis and biology will also strive on a way of process. So right now I'm just will talk about this nutrition uh, mineral balance. So what is ideal healthy nutritionally balanced soil? What is it? Uh, of course soil is consists of certain components. You have a we have a solids, which is uh, rocks and uh, sand. Then you have a or organic matter, and you have a, a air, and you have a water. Those four components are consisting from those components soil is consisted of. 
organic matter. This is um, alpha and omega of ideal soil. It, con it contains carbon and it improves uh, soil structure. We, we went basically this morning devotion through this, so I don't need to repeat it. It also improves um, capacity of the um, uh, gaining minerals in the soil. Feeds biology, microbes, bacteria. So compost is very important thing, uh, thing and it's a sign of good quality. In average, it's 5%, but sandy soil, if they have a 3%, 4%, it's really good value. Clay soil, 7% is, and more is more optimal. Uh, so the rock, those 45%, those are consisting of sand, silt, and clay, and those are the particles that are based on the sizes uh, in the soil. And uh, it's kind of very easy to have a jar test, find out what are the percentage of each component, and from the table or this jungle soil, you can find out what kind of soil you have. It's you can if you if you write an, in a Google uh, soil jungle, you will just end up with many of those versions. But it's kind of precise. Um, what is important is to know that uh, sand has a big structure, but the surface of the sand is not very big one. But once you have a smaller and smaller particles those particles uh, are having bigger and bigger volume in, 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 in total. So, for example, in one cubic centimeters of sand, you have roughly 0 0.25 met uh, square meters, which is square meters, so it's like one quarter of the square meters. No? That's the uh, area of the sand in, in one cubic uh, centimeters. But the clay, which is the smallest particles ever, in the soil, uh, they have a very huge area. So in one cubic centimeter, you can have even six square meters area, which is huge. It has advantages, also disadvantages. But when you take a look at the soil, uh, at, the, at the clay, clay is not a round particle. Th this is the mi microscopic images of the clay. And those are like uh, small plates that are uh, layered uh, above top, uh, each other. Uh, and they, they even know that if uh, those layers are kind of damaged by agriculturing processes, with many many way, those um, those plates are damaged and they are not ap capable to hold nutrients anymore. So imagine that I think this is this is one micrometer. So it's one micrometer uh, big, which is one thousandth of a millimeter uh, size of uh, of this clay particle. And why, why it is important? Each particle has a charge. Uh, it's, it has usually negative. It, it, it has negative charge. A negative charge means that it likes something positive to attach to. Um, and those positives are so-called cation, cations or minerals that are essential for, for uh, uh, plants. So once you have a soil particle, the soil particle, because of the volume of area, they can attach to themselves by itself, those attraction. They can attract uh, the basic uh, cations such as calcium, magnesium, potassium, hydrogen, also is uh, cation plus sodium. So those are like uh, four, let's say five with hydrogen basic cations because they cover almost all entire uh, volume of this inner surface of the soil. And uh, the bigger surface you have, a bigger capacity has the soil to carry those nutrients uh, on, a, on a surface. And this is uh, kind of, uh, we can count it, we know how, what's the capacity, and we kind of express it with this uh, term cation exchange capacity. So it's a capacity of carry those cation uh, minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium at once. Of course, there are some other minerals, but the percentage is very small for the others. Uh, let me say it that way, that this uh, cation exchange capacity really depends on the soil particles and the volume. But for example, sand has very low CEC. Uh, clay has bigger, depending on, depending on type of the clay. And for example, organic matter has a huge capacity to carry those uh, minerals. When you do test, uh, usually test tells you uh, what's the capacity of your soil. So I have an example. This is like image, like how it goes back and forth from roots to, to particles. 
Okay, and, and now is the important thing. Um, I think I skipped one slide. No, it will be. Okay, so let's pay attention now because it's very important. The whole idea of having balanced mineral soil came up with this man, Dr. He was not professor, but he was Dr. William uh, Albrecht. I th they call it a professor, but he was a uh, university uh, professor at the University of Missouri. And it's kind of easy to remember his date of birth and date of death for myself, because those who remember the code, how to enter to this building, it's uh, 18, 1888. Uh, and the second number is the date when I was born. So for me, it's easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he did tremendous study and uh, he, he just basically put basic or ba base basic for this cation exchange capaci capacity idea. Uh, during his work, uh, professional work, he was comparing how uh, fertile lands affects health of the animals. And later on, he was capable to get to the huge database of uh, people who were recruited to Second World War. And he was comparing the uh, 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 dentist, dentist records, uh, the tooth records, when they were recruited to, for army, and how this uh, health of teeth, tooth, teeth, uh, refers to the location where they are from. At the time, it was normally that uh, people usually eat whatever was local, because it was not such a huge transportation as it is now. So they know exactly from wo what locality are, uh, where they have a healthy soil and healthy teeth, and also also compare this with healthy soil and healthy animals. And he just found out that it's matching together. Once you have a healthy soil, and it's uh, real uh, uh, in balance in minerals, you can have uh, healthy animals and also healthy people. They have a stronger bones, uh, much less problems with teeth. Uh, so he established the concept of C CEC capacity, and basically he was saying that uh, once you have a balanced minerals in the soil, based on this CEC, which means you have a proportionally uh, certain amount of calcium, magnesium, uh, potassium, uh, sodium, if you have this in uh, in certain balance, no matter what kind of soil you have, if you have a sandy soil or heavy clay soil, uh, once you reach the balance, you can have a healthy plants, and this leads to healthy animals. Uh, healthy plants means uh, abundance of biology. Abundance of biology helps you to create lots of uh, produce, such as uh, antibiotics or some secondary products that can help uh, plants to, to be resistant against certain diseases. So it's just hand by hand. It's God's work. So CEC concept was uh, uh, initiated at that, at that time, and it's even used until now in some areas. Although it has lots of critics too, of course. Um, okay, here's an image. For example, this is uh, uh, clay soil, ha has very big capacity, but once you, this is calcium, this is uh, 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 magnesium, potassium, what is it, uh, sodium, hydrogen, and some other stuff. But this is a balance uh, mm, proportion. So this is a clay soil, and this is a sand soil. Lower capacity, but the same proportion means that they will have the same uh, possibility to, to produce or to offer plant the, the best nutrition as they can strive, they can use. Um, so, uh, over years, uh, those numbers were settled down. And right now, we know that if you have any soil, uh, 60 to 70 percent of the capacity, it's optimal. Magnesium is somewhere at the range of 10 to 20. Potassium, 2 to 5 percent. 7 percent, I got one analysis. It's good for uh, when you produce potatoes, because they are demanding for, calcium, for potassium. Sodium, 0 0.5 up to 5 percent. Somebody save 3 percent. If you have one, it's really sufficient. Hydrogen is good to have a hydrogen, which means it's good to have a little bit uh, acid soil at a range of 6.5 up to 6.8 uh, pH. So hydrogen is also good because it kind of helps to exchange uh, cations. Um, and there are some other minerals, uh, other minerals like uh, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, 
those are very small percentage. This is percentage, uh, this is the five percentage means it's all together, all those other minerals, cations are in, in the size of five percentage. And there are some kind of uh, relationship that for example, if you would like to have uh, iron at the optimal level, it needs to be 50% of phosphor, for example. O or if you would like to have a manganese, it should be optimally half of the iron in the soil. Zinc, uh, that's the percentage, 0.5%, copper, 0.25%, and so on. Yeah? So this, these are the cations. And there are also some other minerals that are usually attached not to the soil particles, but mostly to the structure of the organic matter. And those, those are like sulfur, uh, phosphorus, uh, nitrogen, of course it has two forms, and uh, CO2 and, and other, other minerals. So, uh, that's the ideal. And really, if this is working, if you have a soil in such a manner, you are really blessed. It means that whatever you plant, it just will grow, and you will have abundance not only above the ground, but also below the ground. How to find this uh, mineral imbalances? So there are three ways. Uh, one way is to observing symptoms. Once you see that uh, plant missing something, you can exactly know that this is the ca uh, case that, I know. for example, if you have a lack of potassium in, uh, uh, in, a, in tomatoes, your leaves, edge of the leaves is kind of browny, yellowing. Uh, so then you know you have to add some uh, potassium. Uh, so observing, uh, usually there are some tests, for example, there are tissue tests or leaves tests, you just send to the laboratory and they'll, they'll tell you exactly what is in the leaves and what is missing. Maybe the best methods, but those are for more commercial farmers, uh, is, to, is, is so called sap analysis. They just take a sap from the veins of the leaves, they know how to analyze it and they compare it with uh, um, standards. And they, they tell you uh, three, four weeks before, before it appears that something is missing. It, it tells you three weeks before, so you can fix it at the earlier stage of, of uh, deficiencies. Okay. Um, another thing is observing uh, plant soils. Because sometimes, for example, I don't know, we, we are talking about uh, blueberries, because we will have a presentation about blueberries also on Sunday. Um, Blueberries likes very right, you know, that they likes acid soil. Um, it doesn't mean that they like it, but uh, they don't have a, mm, they don't have a uh, competition in that soil because it's very acid. They just tolerate it. They, they can live in, in that soil. So once you know w what is growing in the soil, you can observe that, okay, this uh, and on, or that plant uh, likes something, and you can say, okay, maybe this is lacking or exceeding of something. Uh, the problem of those two methods are that you know what is missing or what is excess, but you don't know how much is needed to fix it, you know, how much you have to add it. So I think right now the best way is just to do soil test. It's, I think it's not very expensive, but yeah, you can try it. Uh, indicators of soil <coughs> properties. For example, if you have a, uh, acid soil, uh, English verse, uh, names are at the last uh, row. So for example, uh, camoline uh, tells you that it's acid soil or fireweed, oh, this is fireweed, or red sorrel, I just find the seeds. Uh, this will probably know, uh, oxide daisies, or red clover, it's also typical, it's already mentioned yesterday or today, yesterday it was. So there are some typical plants that are like uh, uh, very present in acid soil. Uh, then uh, those are indicators of alkalic soils. For example, alpha alpha, this one, uh, uh, meadow geranium, or creeping, uh, how do you call it, Syn synchia foil. Sage, you, you'll probably know sage. Sage is very good herb. Use it for coughing if you have a problem with coughing. So, uh, a sign of alkalic soil. Uh, violet also, very nice blue one, on mus mustard too. So, they like this kind of soil. Um, and those are indicators if you have a very high nitrogen, uh, stinky nettles, 
yeah, we have it yesterday. Um, high in potassium, you have a clover, clover, like a naturally occurring, low on potassium. You will find much more, uh, I have much more plants over here, but for the lack of time, I just get rid of them, so I didn't need to mention them. But for example, puppy, red puppy in a field. If there is abundance in the red puppy, of the red puppy on a field, it's a weed, of course, but you can know that potassium is missing, that's for sure. Okay, uh, the way how I do, do it, I just take a book, took a book, uh, Intelligent Gardener, uh, Growing Nutrient Dense Food from Steve Solomon. I don't know if you are familiar with this book. Uh, he just explained all this idea how to do a test and how to, from result of the test, uh, get uh, calculate amendments I, I, I even saw, maybe two years ago, they start to produce a web website that you just send uh, numbers, or you, you, can, you can just add your numbers from the soil test and just gives you a recommendation. I don't know if it is paid or not, but it is available on, on, on website. Um, all the sun analysis, uh, uh, of course, if you are doing analysis, you need to do analysis that contains a CEC value. It's called even total ex capacity exchange, uh, uh, total cation exchange capacity, or it is cation exchange capacity. So there are different uh, laboratories, how they call it. Um, there are different also extract methods. It is recommended that uh, extract methods means they use some extractant uh, mixed with the soil, and then they just do from the produce, from the liquid, they do analysis from that. So for acidic soil, it's very good, the melic tree method, I'm using it. Uh, for calcareous soils, uh, it's a Bray method or ammonium acetate method, double uh, A method. A very alkalic soil, if, if you have a pH more than eight, also is a good one. So there are some methods. Um, I'm not the proponent of laboratories, I don't wanna, because my problem was that I live in Slovakia and I tried to find out how can I get those numbers. And I went to laboratories, like agriculture laboratories in my country, and they ask for every minerals, they ask like five or 10 euros, you know? And 16, wow, well, it was over 100 euros, one test. So in that book, I just find that webpage, Logan Lab sent a sample, which was seven euros of package, half a kilo. And within two weeks, I had a result, which was great for th 30 euros, I guess it was. Plus, plus some standard tests and five other elements. Once I tried uh, Kinsey Lab, Kinsey Lab is uh, run by run by former student of uh, Professor Albrecht. He's retired right now. Uh, reti uh, Professor Albrecht already died, but his former student is in retirement age right now. But he's still running the lab. Once I tried this uh, Kinsey Lab, and it gave me very similar number of main components, of course, a uh, little bit different. I think they are, they are using Bray methods, like, uh, and they. Uh, said recommendation. The only problem between those uh, methods, I th what I think from my uh, not ex professional point of view, is that uh, this um, extractant gives you different value of uh, phosphorus, uh, which means that uh, based on the techniques or the methods, you need to know for the phosphorus different values of the optimal range, because you every test gives you different values so that's that's what but others components i saw very similar between melic tree and ray as i did okay and how this works uh, i just took a piece of uh, the report soil report so you know what's the what's the total, total exchange capacity i just rent a field last this summer of uh, excuse me this spring I, I rent a field it was kind of blessing because we just have it for free a uh, lady, retired lady, just was not able, and her family was not able to take care of the land, small land, and there was lots of weeds, and I was asking if she would like to rent to me. I said, yeah, take it, take it. It's, it's, we, we just don't have to take care of it because it's kind of shame because everywhere is the weed and neighboring and complaining, so just use it and you can have it for free. So from this spring we have a free small land, I don't know, 300, 300 square meters just for planting potatoes and household. Okay, um, I took a test this year. pH was 7.2. There was organic matter uh, at, at, the land at the size of 4%, which is kind of low for the clay soil that we have. Uh, sulfur, 
was 16. It's kind of low at that stage, but this morning at the breakfast I saw land that was in sulfur like two, which was really, really critical. I don't, I don't see that person here. Ah, yeah, he said he will have a work in a kitchen today. Okay, so once we have a, a 16 from the result from the test, I recalculate it, uh, we can recalculate it to, this is a PPM, it's a part per millions of, uh, part per millions. It's one, one uh, promille, I don't know in English. Okay, doesn't matter. We, when you double it, you get result in kilograms per hectares of that element uh, in, a th uh, in a 15 centimeters of uh, depth of the soil. So it's uh, 36 kilograms in one hectare in 30 centimeters, uh, in 15 centimeters. And then I know that uh, this I can uh, recalculate. There are some kind of numbers that tells you how much it needs for the soil. So this is the target, 278. I have only 16. So I have to add the, those. Uh, I am lacking 243 for that land. Oh, just back. And once I have no, what, what, uh, what's the deficit? and I try to find out what I can supply. So there are some kind of, um, I will talk about it later. No, I won't state. There are some kind of uh, uh, products, organic products or commercial products or even non-organic products that can supply uh, sulfur to the land. So there is a table, you just pick one. And imagine you need uh, 243 from that. Uh, and based on the size of the garden, you want to replenish and uh, depth of your tilling. So we will mix 30 centimeters. I know that I need 11 kilograms of this uh, sulfur, uh, elemental sulfur, uh, which contains 99% of the uh, sulfur, yeah. Uh, sulfur is also good uh, from, uh, um, how they call it, the uh, gypsum. It contains calcium and sulfur at the same time, so if you like both of them, it's good to use it. And there are some other sources, of course. Okay, so this is how the calculation looks like, not only for the sulfur, but all other elements. So I know exactly for my garden, I need those elements in, in such a uh, matter that I can uh, found. And all together, all elements, you know, summarize it and then I just add it to the proper, um, in the proper amount to the land. Uh, to getting balance takes two to three years, it depends on the unbalancing. It's good to have a very poor soil, so you will just add to the balance. But it's very bad if you have excesses and you need to drop something. It just takes years, yeah. It, it is possible, but it takes time and the worst in balance is when you have a uh, lots of phosphorus in the ground, in the land. Uh, it's my case that's, that I find out after several years of that, <laughs> that uh, if you have a phosphorus, you just cannot get rid of it. Uh, not with the chemistry, you just can just grow things and just throw it away with the biomass, just goes also phosphorus, which is kind of, I don't know, 10, 20 years work of getting <laughs> ideal. So yeah. But I have a hope, I have a hope because we just discussed with I Irka yesterday that uh, once this is God's plan, God's work, God's design. So I'm just, I have a hope that once the biology in the soil will get into proper balance or in it will be flourish, there are some processes that can kind of capture or r release phosphorus or put it into the stage that are not uh, available for the plants anymore. So that's my hope. Here is the list of uh, where you can find list of allowable am am amendments in organic farming. Uh, when I, in past time, I used to use this ORMI uh, products list. It's given in the United States and Canada and for Mexico. Uh, right now in Slovakia, they just um, made, I don't know, a few years ago, the list of fertilizer and soil amendments. So, and every country has such a list. So you can use it for nourishing your garden if you need it. So, okay, I think I will finish here now. Uh, there is a description of Miralas, but yeah, some other time, some other conference. Uh, let me finish with two last slides where it is. Okay, well, you see it's another hour. 
Okay, let's finish it. Uh, there is a quote from Education, uh, page 219. Then they, uh, it's uh, given to young people. So young people learn what science can teach in regards to the nature and preparation of the soil, the value of the different crops and the best methods of the production. Let them put their knowledge to use. So it's good to learn how uh, things works. It it good it is it's good to know the science. It's interesting they used that she used it word science. Uh, it's good to know the science behind it, how it works. Uh, uh, it's good to know how the different crops are planted, uh, what's at the value and how to make them the best methods of production. It's really good things to do it, to to know it, you know. But we need to even us or young people, if we teach them, we need to let them put this into in their knowledge into the practice in the practical things so they have to use it this knowledge so i'm just uh, would like to encourage you that once you learn something even from that presentation or others or from this weekend just use it like put into the practical things because then you get the blessing of of the knowledge but this is the same as uh, as with god once it's not enough yesterday we heard it's not enough just to listen and to hear but we need to contemplate, we need to absorb it, we need to live it. So we need to put into the practice, into the use. Okay, so thank you for the attention and I wish you, you will have a abundant in your garden. For example, even when you set up the balance in minerals. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, questions, of course. Um, uh, I did it, uh, but uh, yeah, I try it. I try it, and it helps in uh, within one or two years. It it kind of uh, helps with uh, uh, flourishing your uh, certain crops. Not every, but certain crops. The problem of the uh, rocks is that you don't know exactly what is it, and you don't even know if it is uh, because with rocks you can even create access, and access is not also a good thing. So, yeah, it's a, it's a trial and error if you would like to use it. But yeah, sometimes it can help. And especially, good that you mentioned, uh, from the test analysis, you know only 12 elements, the basic one. Uh, there are 100 more, not 100, sorry. <laughs> the Mendeley table has, yeah, it's more over 100, yeah. But not every uh, every element is needed, of course, in the soil. But uh, once you use those powders, uh, it's good to use them, especially because there are that could be some micro elements that you need it, but you just don't even know if you have it or not. So yeah, it's just trial and error in, in using those. Yeah. Yeah. Question. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me repeat the question for the record. So what, what do what I think about uh, using annual manures and the contaminants in the annual manures? Uh, again, this is question of, uh, it could be good because sometimes those contaminants could be good for your soil. For example, I know that they, they are using a chicken manure or po poultry manure. Uh, for that reason that uh, they knew that those animals are fed uh, with a uh, copper uh, supplements because one they once they don't have a copper they first uh, first are just uh, kind of uh, they have a skin yeah they lose the f uh, the, the feather they lose feathers yeah uh, so they they, they, they they farmers already know that there are lots of coppers in the manure from that uh, animals and if they are lacking uh, copper, which is most of the cases I saw uh, in Slovakian land, although we have some region that there are lots of uh, copper and it's even at the stage of contamination of the of the land, but those are like uh, mining areas. Yeah, they have, okay, that's not a question, uh, answer. So yeah, sometimes you can use it, but sometimes, uh, especially, uh, the, the problem maybe are not the minerals. The problem are more, uh, uh, antibiotics that are given to the animals. Uh, sometimes you have a manure 
and you use it or you want to compost it because you need to compost or the best way is to compost the manure and use it composted but uh, if there are lots of in an antibiotics they just cannot because antibiotics means the bacteria are kind of uh, uh, barely surviving so the composting process is very slow or, or almost none so yeah those kind of issue you can run into it if you if you use uh, manual it is saying that or we i think according to my inexperienced <laughs> knowledge uh, i think that uh, manual is good one uh, but probably only from clean animals so because you just avoid some problems that can run further away in processing other manures. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's a good source, of course, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, another question? Uh, yes, uh, you can do it. Even in that book I mentioned, uh, there is a all few chapters re related to or orchids, the yeah the tree uh, plants. Uh, you can do it, uh, and then you use uh, biology to do that. You you spread uh, uh, minerals that you are lacking. You let them uh, on the ground. You can do some shallow tillage. Uh, shallow means two, three, up to five centimeters, no more. Yeah. And uh, uh, and then and then just wait that biology will just take this to the to the ground and water of course also, uh, yeah there are some methods. Uh, do, uh, and, and also, I know that the farmers organic some organic farmers also replenish the land in such a way that between the rows of the trees there is uh, some space I don't know maybe meter away from the uh, tree uh, stem and they cult they cultivate this land they uh, replenish it with the uh, amendments and they also add some uh, uh, green manure which means they grow it cover crops yeah it grows it creates lots of uh, biology underneath it creates biomass and spreads yeah to the sides yeah it works like that so yeah you can use it in production fruits production Uh, yes, uh, I used to do. Yeah, I use those. Uh, I used to use those. I think I will not use it anymore, unless it will be very, very needed. Uh, I use them for pit, uh, tomato. I grow them in a greenhouse. Uh, yeah, uh, the the way his approach is that uh, in order to enhance this photosynthesis, he tried to do different types of techniques to enhance it. So one way how to get minerals into the uh, plants is also through foliar uh, fertilizers. Uh, they, they are using specific uh, foliar fertilizers. If, for example, if they lack uh, copper, and uh, it's not the, what's the name of the SO, COSO3, sulfur, um, copper sulfur. Um, Sometimes it call it blue salt because it's blue, S uh, copper sulfate, modra skalica. Yeah, <laughs> we call it modra skalica. <laughs> Maybe the same, uh, copper sulfate. Yeah, once it it could be used for foliar spraying uh, in certain concentration, of course, uh, but it's not used. Uh, he recommend not to use it directly this uh, sulfur because it is toxic for biology. Uh, they they use so called chelated uh, copper sulfur which means uh, chelat is uh, is a uh, dead mineral is kind of bounded in a protein of s or or some uh, some other compound usually it's protein but it's some compound other compound that kind of cover this uh, copper molecule of the copper or copper sulfate and uh, if this is uh, and this is exactly the stage when uh, uh, plants are taking this uh, copper sulfate from the ground it's a chelate form um, you can make a chel. I made a chelate very easily with uh, citric acid and couple sulfate, sulfate together mixing in a certain way. And uh, but there are some even commercially available chelated uh, minerals. I, I know that uh, uh, copper is chelated. Uh, iron could be chelated. Um, I don't know manganese maybe. I don't know. 
but those micro elements could be chelated, not all of them, but yeah, which, which is good for environment and for the biology. It's not toxic, directly toxic for the, for the biology. Yeah, exactly. When is necessary? Uh, sub analysis. <laughs> it's very expensive. <laughs> uh, there is a program. They they do it in Holland, by the way. Even John Kemp is collecting samples and ship ship it through the overseas to Holland, yeah, to Netherlands. Um, uh, yeah. The the best way is really this sub analysis. Uh, they do it like every second week during the season, entire season, but every sample costs like, I don't know, 60, 70 euros. So every two weeks, 70 euros, it's quite a lot of money. Yeah, but you can do it through observation of the, uh, of, of the lacking, uh, according to Lee's, for example. For example, I found on the internet from university some extension, United States Extension University handouts related to tomatoes, and uh, what kind of minerals is missing if leaves is such a way squirreled or between veins has some white or yellow uh, stuff. So there is a key and according to this key you can find out a little bit late, it's two, three weeks later than sub-analysis, but still you can fix it somehow. It's, it's, it's uh, possible. And the best way is to use it foliar application, but you can also do application into the ground. Yeah. Again, this is human intervention. You need to know exactly what to do and when to do and how to do it. Uh, just don't say, oh, I use this copper sulfate and it helps my tomato and your neighbor will hear it and will use it for 20 years and suddenly, wow, copper level goes up. It usually goes up even in a vineyard because they use copper sulfate. And I did analysis not, not far away, not many months ago, two months ago, uh, one person bought a uh, vineyard and copper level was at the level of... Uh, I think optimum is not the level, the optimum level is maybe 10 ppm. And he had something like 20, which is not bad, but I told him, wow, be careful, no copper sulfate anymore or copper application. So yeah, it could be sometimes. So yeah, you can intervene somehow uh, and uh, you can help with your plants, but you need to know exactly that you really need it and, and use it. Otherwise, you just need to rely and have a faith that biology will take it. Uh, if you don't have a copper in the, s uh, in the soil, uh, this is also an important thing. If you don't have a mineral in the soil, according to test, it doesn't mean that it's not there. It's just not available for the plant. It's not in the ex extract they took it from the, from the sample. It is in the rock somehow hidden. And at that time, you need bacteria, you need fungi. They have some enzyme processes. They can attach to the uh, rock and they can release that mineral from it and Shift it, ship it to, to the plant. It, it, this is how it works. Just rely on the God and do everything to support that life, you know, under the ground and, and, yeah, and also above, which means to have good photosynthesis and good abundant life. Yeah. But somehow we are in a stage, in a sinful stage, that the soil is in a s or this process is somehow disrupted or distracted which means we sometimes need to intervene. We need to just know how and use it, right, to, to put it back into the balance. And God gave us this, Dom, and once we know it, we can put the knowledge into use. <laughs> okay, I think we should finish because I am over time, I guess. Uh, any other question? Okay, let's finish with prayer. If you have any question, yeah, you can ask me. Dear Jesus, we are so thankful that you gave us knowledge in these days. Thank you very much that uh, you also give us uh, peace and also uh, give us humbleness against your beautiful, productive, abundant system. We would like to be not a uh, user of it or those who are just taking uh, advantage of it, but we would like to be your manager, those who are uh, those who you sign up in a Garden of Eden, that we, we will manage things that you are giving us as a, as a duty. Uh, we would like to ask you for, uh, for using this knowledge and also bring us also wisdom, because we know that those stuff are sometimes very expensive, 
but uh, we know that you, ga you gave us lots of wisdom so we can observe and use it so that the products will bring life, bring friendships, fellowships, that uh, this farming and marketing farming or farming with neighbors or sharing goods with neighbors will bring glory to you and will move or prepare souls for your coming. Amen. <laughs>